The Cube. And Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back everyone, live here in Silicon Valley in San Jose. This is Hadoop Summit, this is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, joined with my co-host Jeff Kelly, top big data analyst in the, in the community. Uh, our next guest is Jack Norris, CMO of MapR, security, enterprise. That's the buzz of the show. It was the buzz of OpenStack Summit, another open source show. Um, and here this year, you're just seeing move after move after move, talking about a couple critical issues, enterprise grade, Hadoop, uh, Hortonworks announced a big acquisition, went all in, as they said, and now Cloudera follows suit with their news today. Are you sitting back saying, they're catching up to you guys? I mean, what, how do you look at that? I mean, because you guys have, that's the security stuff nailed down. So what, tell yeah, us yeah, yeah. how you feel about that. No, I think, uh, I mean, if you look at the kind of Hadoop market, um, it's definitely moving from a, a test experimental phase into a production phase. Uh, we've got tremendous customers across verticals um, that are doing some really interesting production use cases. And we recognize very early on that to really meet the needs of customers required some architectural innovation. So combining the open source ecosystem packages with some innovations underneath to really deliver high availability, data protection, disaster recovery features. Security is part of that, but if you can't protect, protect the data, if you can't have multi-tenancy and, and separate uh, workflows across a cluster, then it doesn't matter how secure it is, you know, you need those as... as so I got I to ask you a direct question since we're here at, at uh, Hadoop Summit. Because um, we get this question all the time, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon. Yeah. You guys are so successful, but I just don't understand your business model. It's, we're free content and we have some underwriters. So you guys have been very successful, yet people aren't looking at MapR as, you are like the quiet leader, like you're doing your business, you're making money. Jeff shared some numbers with us that in the Hadoop community about 20% are paying subscriptions. That's unlike your business model. So explain to the folks out there the business model and specifically the traction because you yeah. have paying customers. Yeah, oh no, we've got, we've got over 500 paying customers. We've got at least one million dollar customer in seven different verticals. So we've got breadth and depth. And our business model is simple. We're an enterprise software company that's looking at how to provide the best of open source as well as innovations underneath. You provide the most open distribution of Hadoop but you add that value separately to that, right? So you're, it's not so much that you're proprietary at all, right? Can you clarify that? Right, so if you look at, at this exciting ecosystem, Hadoop is fairly early in its life cycle. If it's a commoditization phase, like Linux or, or a relational database with MySQL, open source kind of equates the whole technology. Here at the beginning of this life cycle, or early stage of the life cycle, there's some architectural innovations that are really required. Um, if you look at Hadoop, it's an append-only file system relying on Linux, and that really limits the types of operations, the types of use cases that you can do. What MapR has done is provide some deep architectural innovations to provide complete read-write file systems to integrate data protection with snapshots and mirroring, et cetera. So there's a whole host of, of capabilities that make it easy to integrate, enterprise secure, and, um, and scale much better. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you were maybe a little early to the market in the sense that, uh, we heard Merv Adrian in his keynote this morning talk about, you know, it's about 10 years when you start to get these questions about security and governance, yep. and we're about nine years into Hadoop. Um, do you feel like maybe you guys were a little early and now you're at a tipping point, whereas these, more, if more and more deployments get ready to go to production, this is going to be uh, an area that's going to become increasingly important. I think, uh, I think our timing has been spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we, we, we kind of came out at a time when there was uh, some customers that were really serious about Hadoop. We were able to work closely with them and prove our technology, and now as the market is just ramping, we're here with all of those features that they need. And 
what's, uh, what's an issue is that an incremental improvement to provide those kind of key features is not really possible if the underlying architecture isn't there. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to provide you know, online real-time capabilities in a underlying platform that's append only. Mm -hmm. So the, the HDFS layer written in Java relying on the Linux file system is kind of the, the weak underbelly, if you will, of, of the ecosystem. There's a lot of a lot of important developments happening, you know, yarn on top of it, a lot of really kind of exciting things that, that we're um, actively participating in, including Apache Drill, and on top of a complete read-write file system and integrated Hadoop database, it just makes it all come to life. Yeah, I mean, those things on top are critical, but you know, it's, it's the underlying infrastructure that um, you know, we asked the Wikibon community about that. You know, what's the, what are the things that are really holding you back from Hadoop in production? And the, and the biggest challenges they cited were high availability, backup yep. and recovery, and maintaining performance at scale. Those yep. are the top three. Yep. And that's kind of where MapR has been focused you know, since day one. So if you look at uh, major retailer, 2,000 nodes in MapR, 50 unique applications running on a single cluster, um, 10,000 jobs a day running on top of that. Um, if you look at the Rubicon project, they recently went public, 100 million ad auctions, uh, I mean a hundred billion ad auctions a day mm -hmm. on, on top of that platform. Beats Music, that just got acquired mm. for three billion dollars. Um, basically it's the underlying MapR engine that allowed them to scale and personalize that music service. So there's a, there's a lot of proof points in terms of how quickly we scale the, the enter enterprise grade features that we provide and kind of the blending of deep predictive analytics in a batch environment with online capabilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you about um, um, your go-to-market. I see Cloudera and Hortonworks have different business models. Just talk about that. But Cloudera got the massive funding. So you get this question all the time. What do you? How do you counter that army of the, the arms race? I think. What's your answer? To that? Dan Biz Woods uh, just wrote an article in Forbes, and he says cash is not a strategy. Uh, and I think that was a that was, that was an excellent excellent article. And he goes in and. You know, in this fast-growing market, um, you know, an amount of money isn't necessarily translate to architectural innovations or speeding the development of that. Mm -hmm. um, this is a fairly fragmented ecosystem in terms of the, the stack that runs on top of it. There's no single application or single vendor that kind of drives value, so an acquisition strategy is, is somewhat limited. So your limited. field, Salesforce is direct or indirect, both, mix of both? How do you handle the... Because Cloudera's got feet on the street and every squirrel will find a nut. If they're parked, if they're parking the sales reps and SCs at all the enterprise yeah. accounts, you know, they're going to get, the squirrel's going to find a nut once in a while. Yeah. And they're going to actually try to engage the client. So, you know, I guess it is a strategy if they're deploying sales and marketing, right? So, and I think the, the, the beauty about that, and in fact, we're all in this together in terms yeah. of sharing an API and driving an ecosystem. Um, it's not a fragmented market. You can start with one distribution and move to another without recompiling or without, uh, doing any sort of, of changes. So um, it's a fairly open community. If this were a vendor lock-in or you know, then spending money on brand, et cetera, would, would be important. Um, our focus is on the, so the focusing sales side, on, do you on our direct, execution. Do you have direct sales? Yes, we have direct sales. We also have uh, partners, and it depends on the geographies as to what that percentage we split is. We had John Schroeder on with the HP at the Big Data NYC. How's the update with the HP relationship? Oh, excellent. In fact, we just launched our application gallery, our app gallery, make it very easy for administrators and developers and analysts to get access and understand what's available in the ecosystem. Uh, that's uh, available directly on our, our website. And one of the featured applications there today is an integration with the MapR Sandbox and HP Vertica. So you can get uh, early access, try it, and get the best of kind of enterprise grade SQL. So on it's top the of first, MapR. basically, it's the first Hadoop app store, basically. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to call it that way, right? So like, is, how many apps are available? Uh, we launched with uh, close to 30. 30, okay. With uh, you know, a whole wave kind of following that. So t talk a little bit about, uh, you know, speaking of Vertica and kind of the SQL on Hadoop. So, you know, there's a lot of talk about that. Some confusion about the different methods for applying SQL on Hadoop. Yeah. Uh, where MapR takes a, an open approach. I know you'll, you'll support things like Impala from, from a competitor, Cloudera. Talk about that approach from a MapR's perspective. So I guess our, our, our 
perspective is kind of unbiased open source. We, we don't try to pick and choose and dictate what's the right open source based on either our participation or some community involvement. Uh, and the reality is with multiple applications being run on the platform, there are different use cases that make different, um, you know, make different sense. So whether it's a hive solution or uh, you know, drill, drills available, or HP Vertica, mm -hmm. people have the, the choice. And it's part of, of a broad range of capabilities that you want to be able to run on the platform for your workflows, whether mm -hmm. it's SQL access, or a MapReduce, or uh, a Spark framework, Shark, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there, because there's so many different, there's Spark, there's, you know, you can run HP Vertica, you've got Impala, you've got Hive and the Stinger Initiative. Um, is, do you, is that whole kind of SQL on Hadoop ecosystem still working itself out? Are we going to have this many options in a year or two years from now? Or are they complementary and potentially, you know, each has its, has its role? I think the major difference is, um, is kind of how it deals with the new data formats. Mm -hmm. You know, can it deal with uh, self-describing uh, data sources? Can it, you know, leverage a JSON file? Does it require a centralized metadata? And um, those are some of the perspectives and advantages, say, the Apache Drill has, is to expand the data sets that are possible, enable data exploration without dependency on, a, on an IT administrator to define that, that metadata. Mm -hmm. um, so another, maybe not uh, always as exciting, but taking workloads from existing systems, moving them to Hadoop is yep. one of the ways that a lot of people get started with Hadoop, uh, whether it's those data transformation workloads or, or something in that vein. Um, so I know you've announced a partnership with SyncSort, and that's one of the things that they focus on is really making it as easy as possible to, to yep. make those moves. Talk a little bit about that partnership, uh, why that makes sense for you, and, and what it's going to bring to your customers. I think it's a great proof point because um, we announced that partnership around mainframe offload. Uh, we have uh, both Comscore and Experian in that, in that press release. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a workload on a mainframe going to Hadoop, um, that that seems like, you know, that, that's a that's really an oxymoron. But by having the capabilities that MapR has and making that a system of record with that full high availability and that data protection, we're actually an option to out, off, offload from mainframe, um, offload from SAN processing, and provide a really cost-effective, scalable alternative. And we've got customers that um, had, had tried to offload from a mainframe multiple times in the past unsuccessfully, and have done it successfully with MapR. Mm -hmm. um, so talk a little bit more about kind of the, the broader partnership strategy. I mean, we're, we're here at Hadoop Summit. Uh, of course, Hortonworks talks a lot about their partnerships and kind of their reseller uh, arrangements. Cloudera seems to take a little bit more of a direct approach. What's MapR's approach to kind of partnering uh, and, and as that relates to kind of reseller arrangements and things like that? I think the app gallery is probably a, a great proof point there. Um, the strategy is, is an ecosystem approach. It's uh, having a collection of, of tools and applications and um, management uh, facilities as well as applications on top. So it's a very uh, open strategy. We focus on making sure that we have open APIs at that application layer, that it's very easy to get uh, data in and out, mm -hmm. and part of that architecture by presenting standard file system format, by allowing uh, non-Java applications to run directly on our platform, to support standard uh, database connections, ODBC and JDBC, to provide database functionality in addition to kind of this deep predictive analytics. It, really, it's about supporting the broadest set of applications on mm -hmm. top of a single platform. Because mm -hmm. what we're seeing in this kind of this, this modern architecture is data gravity matters and the more processing you can do on a single platform, the better off you are, the more agile, the more competitive. Right, so, uh, so in terms of, so you're partnering with people like SAS, for example, to kind of bring some of the, some of the analytic capabilities into the platform. Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about any, yeah, any work you're doing there? Or? Companies like SAS and Revolution Analytics mm -hmm. and Skytree and I mean just a whole host of of companies on the analytics side as well as on the tools and you know, visualization, et cetera. Yeah, well I mean, I, I bring up SAS because I think uh, they, they get the fact that the, the whole data gravity situation is, they've got, they've got to go to where the data is and not yeah. have the data come to them. So you know, I give them credit for kind of acknowledging that, that uh, kind of big data um, truthism, that it's, it's all about going to the data and not bringing the data to the compute. 
Jack, talk about the success you had with the customers. That's a pretty impressive number. Talk about 500 customers. Merv Adrian from Gardner was on with us earlier. Essentially reiterating, not mentioning MapR, he was just saying what you guys are doing is right where the puck yeah. is going. Yeah. Um, and some think the puck is not even there on the same rink, some other vendors. So I got to give you props on that. So, but I want you to talk about the success you've had specifically around where you're winning and where you're successful well, I th I think and where you guys have struggled and need to improve on. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole class of applications that I think Hadoop is enabling, which is about operations and analytics. It's taking this, this high arrival rate machine generated data and doing analytics as it happens and then impacting the business. So whether it's fraud detection or recommendation engines or you know, supply chain applications using sensor data, uh, it's happening very, very quickly. So a system that can tolerate and accept streaming data sources could, has real time operations that is 24 by seven and highly available is, is what really moves the needle. And that's the examples I used with, you know, ad uh, Rubicon project and, uh, you know, cable What's TV the primary and outcome? What's the primary outcomes your clients want with your product? Is it stability in the platform? Is it to enable development? Is there a specific, is there an outcome that's consistent across all your wins? Um, well, the big picture, some of them are focused on revenues, like how do we optimize revenue, either it's a new data source or it's a new application or it's an existing application we're exploding the data set. Some of it's reducing costs, so they want to do things like a mainframe offload or a data warehouse offload. And then there's some that are focused on risk mitigation. And if there's anything that, that they have in common, it's as they moved from kind of test and looked at production, it's the key capabilities that they have in enterprise systems today that they want to make sure they're in Hadoop. So it's not, it's, it's not anything new, it's just like, hey, we've got SLAs, and I've got data protection policies, and I've got a disaster recovery procedure, and why can't I expect the same level of capabilities in Hadoop mm -hmm. that I have today in those other systems? Mm -hmm. Okay, so final question, where are you guys heading this year? What's your key objectives? Obviously, you're getting these announcements, that was a flurry of announcements, good success. Um, state of the company, how many employees, where are you guys at? Give us a quick update on the numbers. So, uh, you know, we just reported this incredible momentum where we've tripled uh, quarter growth year over year. We've added uh, a tremendous amount of customers. We're over 500 now, so we're basically sticking to our knitting, focusing on the customers, elevating the, the proof points here. Um, some of the most significant customers we have in the telco and financial services and, and healthcare and, uh, and retail area are, you know, view this as a strategic weapon, view this as a huge competitive advantage, and it's helping them impact their business that's really spurring our success. We've, you know, we're, we're growing at an incredible clip here, and um, it's just, it's a great time to have made those calls and those investments early on and kind of reaping the benefits you now. Now I've always said, when we, since the first Hadoop Summit, when uh, Hortonworks came out of Yahoo and this whole community kind of burst open, you had Hadoop World, now O'Reilly runs that, it's a whole different vibe of itself. This one's still got the developer vibe. So I got to ask you, we've always been a big fan, I mean, everyone has enough beachhead to be successful. It's not about MapR versus Hortonworks yes. or Cloudera. This is why I always kind of smile when everyone goes, oh, Cloudera or Hortonworks. I mean, they're two different animals at this point, doing two different things. You guys are over here. Everyone has their, quote, swim lanes or beachhead. There's not a lot of super competition, do you think? Or is it going to be this way for a while? What's your fork? At, some, at what point do you see uh, more competition? 10 years out, I mean, Merv was talking a 10-year horizon for innovation. I, th I think that, uh, the more people learn and understand about Hadoop, um, the more they'll appreciate these kind of set of capabilities that matter in production and post-production, and it'll migrate earlier. And as we you know, focus on more developer tools like our sandbox so people can easily get experience and understand kind of what MapR is, I think we'll start to see a lot more um, understanding and momentum. Awesome. Jack Norris here inside theCUBE, CMO of MapR, very successful enterprise grade, a Duke player, a leader in the space. Thanks for coming on, we really appreciate it. We're right back after this short break here live in Silicon Valley, Hadoop Summit 2014, we're right back.